Hi, and welcome to our program from Embryo to Chick. My name is Jeanette Berenger, and I'm the Senior Program Manager for the Livestock Conservancy, a national nonprofit dedicated to the conservation of rare livestock and poultry breeds. Today's topic is caring and handling, where we will explore how to document the hatch and care for your newly hatched chicks. This has been an exciting week at the farm because we've had two batches of chicks hatch out, including two heritage breeds, the Dominique and the Crevcore. You might actually hear them in the background. They are very active and busy in the brooder. So let's see how we made out with the hatches. Our hatching adventure started just a few days ago on day 21 of incubation when I stepped into the spare room, aka the Behringer hatchery, and was thrilled to finally see some hatching activity in our new Barato incubator. The first chick had hatched and it looks like it's a Crevcore because it came out of one of the white eggs. The Dominique eggs are all brown. I took a closer look and there he was, our first chick. It's still wet and drying off, but it looks healthy. Now he just needs time to rest and recover from the huge effort it took to break out of the egg. I went back a short while later and found the incubator loaded with newly hatched chicks. This was so cool to see. Once the chicks were dried off and ready to go to their new home in the brooder, I needed to take one step along the way to mark each chick so I could identify which hatch they come from and know who their parents are. I can do this with a toe punch. I use a simple tool that I use to separate the skin between their toes. This does not hurt the chicks in any way and it serves as a great way to permanently mark the bird. This chart shows you the numerous combinations you can use to identify birds in your hatch. Because I manage three family groups in my flock, it's important for my breeding program's success to know which family each bird belongs to. As you can see, toe punching is pretty simple and it goes very quickly. Et voila! This is my brooder and it will serve as the chick's home for the next couple of weeks. It's a warm, draft-free place where they can build up their strength and grow. I start out with a temperature around 90 degrees in the hot spot and watch my chicks to see how they act in the brooder. If they're all clustered under the heater, that means it's too cold, so I'll turn up the heat. If they're all away from the heater, that means it's too hot. What you want to see is some under the heat while others are walking around the brooder. The brooder has a mesh bottom, so all of the poop goes into a tray below that keeps the chicks nice and clean. Once they outgrow this brooder, they'll move to a larger room that has hot spots but has plenty of room for the growing birds. As you introduce chicks to the brooder, you need to show them where the water is. You do this by dipping their beak gently in the water and watch to see that they swallow a small bit of it. Then you can let them go. Choosing the right feed for your chicks is the foundation for their good health. Young chicks need to be on a starter diet which is high in protein and is needed for growth and development. After six to eight weeks, the chicks will transition to a grower diet which is lower in protein because they don't need the higher level at this stage of their life. For my newly hatched chicks, I like to add a little electrolyte and vitamin powder into their water for the first few days just to be sure they have the little boost it can provide them. This is very useful if you're working with a delicate or really rare breed that you want to be extra sure will make it during the challenging first days of their lives. For the first few days, I'll put the feed in an open feed pan until all the chicks figure out what food is. I will then put a cover over the pan that allows the chicks to eat the food, but they will not be able to jump in with it in the pan and soil the food. I change the water out twice a day to make sure that it's always clean and plentiful for them. That's really important. As you can see, it sure doesn't take them very long to figure out what food is. Chickens don't have teeth, so in order to grind up their food, they eat little pieces of stone we call grit. The stones act just like teeth would to help them digest their food properly. You need to offer them the extra small starter grit first, and as they grow you will increase the size to grower grit and then finally adult sized grit. The last thing I like to offer the chicks is the opportunity to dust bathe. This is how they keep themselves clean and keep their feathers in good shape. 
This small litter pan is great for chicks to start off with. Inside I will put a mixture of equal parts of sand, hardwood ashes, and diatomaceous earth. You can purchase dust bath powder at the local feed store if you don't feel you want to make your own. Here are some of my Buckeyes taking a dust bath. I just put a fresh batch in their dust bath area and they jumped right in. They just love it. Well, that about wraps it up for this lesson. In our next segments, we will cover important record keeping and the math skills that come in handy for documenting the progress of your chicks. We will also have a final visit with the chicks and see how to get a coop ready for them as they grow into adults. For more information on other programs with the Livestock Conservancy and North Carolina Cooperative Extension, please visit our websites. The Livestock Conservancy is a nonprofit that's been saving rare and endangered breeds for more than 43 years. Our small staff and large network of volunteer breeders stretches throughout America to help identify and protect more than 150 breeds, poultry, and livestock. And you can help us. Become a member of the Conservancy today and help make sure these irreplaceable genetic treasures are available for tomorrow's food and fiber system. Thanks for joining us today and have a great day. Here's hoping the chicken projects you dream of come true. This program would not be possible without the support of our sponsors, including Tractor Supply Company and the Manton Foundation. Special thanks to Premier One for providing the Barado Table Top Incubator and to Hamilton Rare Breeds Foundation for the GQF Cabinet Incubator. <music>